Good afternoon, ladies. Oh, thank you for that. Could let's we can do better than that though, I think. How are you doing? How about we give the Lord a hand clap? Woohoo! I hope that you have continued to hear things that will grow and bear fruit in your lives. Um, <clears throat> as we conclude this afternoon with, with a session, we'll have a time of worship and a time with Dave and Linda. Um, but before we get started, I often get asked, what is CGWM anyway? And it took me a couple years to actually find a good answer to that. But I made a video instead of me trying to talk and, and having it take 15 minutes. I put it all condensed it into a video. And that video will be uploaded to the YouTube channel. So if any of you have a women's meeting at your church and you want to share it, it'll be there for you to share. Um, I hope you will. And now... Let's worship with Emmaus Road. We're all just back there praying and getting ready. And Are they ready for us yet? We don't know. Let's pray some more. Thank you again for the privilege of uh, being here to worship and uh, you know we say lead worship but in reality we're just worshiping together um, and that's our goal if, if we're if we're at the forefront and you're following us you're looking at the wrong people and so it's our our desire for you to just see Jesus and for you to to go where he leads and we all be led by him together um, he's amazing he is so much more than we understand. He is wholly beyond our ability to comprehend or even sing, but we're going to try. We're going to sing about how holy he is.
that gather around a particular cause or a particular individual, and some of them say some pretty good things. Some of them do some very good things. But there's only one person in the history of God's creation who ever got up from his grave <laughs> under the power of his own Holy Spirit. And for that reason, we follow Jesus. There can be a lot of good things and a lot of wisdom here and there, but no one has the keys to death, hell, and the grave. No one has the keys to eternal life but Jesus. And as we place our faith and our trust in him, he invites us to bring him our brokenness, to bring him things that, the messes that we've made, things that we think are dead beyond resurrection. <laughs> but he's the God of resurrection. Jesus Christ turns graves into gardens. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty prayer. Treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along and you put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied. Oh, here in your love, yeah, Lord, there's no.
It's been said that we all worship something. In fact, God created us. Part of our function is to worship and to reflect his glory. Whatever we give our time, our thought, our resources to, that's truly what we worship. And I don't know about you, but I want who I worship to be worthy of that. I want Jesus to be my only king forever. gave your life for mine nailed to the cross you crucified all my sin and shame it was washed by your mercy you are the treasure I find my reason for living so let my life Come an offering to the one who is worthy. All praise to the Lord most high. All praise to the one who saved my life. All praise to Jesus Christ. of my heart the veil in between was torn apart now you hold the keys to the grave cause you bring things to life you roll stones away all praise to the Lord most high all praise to the one who saved my life all praise Oh! 
Jesus Christ, High King of Heaven, my King forever. Lord, we lift our praise to you. cry out to you. You are the only king worthy of our praise. As we think through our lives and think of all of the times we've not been worthy of your mercy and your grace, and yet you've poured it out so selflessly on us. Our only response is to worship. Our only response is to lay our lives down at your feet, Jesus, to trust you with our everything, our failures, our successes, our now, our past, and our future. And we do that now.
everything. And we will praise you with every fiber of our being for all eternity. Okay, we're at halftime. Uh, what happens at a football game? Well, <laughs> you go in for the pass. <laughs> um, so you do things different at halftime. You go in the locker room and you ask some questions of yourselves and figure out what in the world is going on. So I want to give you five or ten minutes, no more than that, to just... If there's a question that's been on your mind about some of the stuff that we've covered thus far, I want you to ask it now. Now, there's method in my madness at this point. There are some times that we hear things and we process them and we think, really? Well, maybe it was really, maybe it wasn't. So we'd just like the opportunity to uh, hear your questions and maybe clarify and also give glory to him um, because he's the one. Everything this weekend is pointing to him. Our worship, what's going on in our lives, and that's the way it ought to be because worship's not just this. Worship's 24-7. 24-7. Mm-hmm. Give me your everyday life Eugene Peterson translates Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Just give me your everyday life. So, what questions do you have? Yes, Brenda. The amphitheris in, in two days, apparently, along with God, took care. The question was this, do I still have the spores in my spine? No, I'd be dead, okay? Um, Either, (laughs) you're too close. (laughs) Either um, the amphitericin killed the spores that were there, or God said, that's enough. And you know, there are times that he does just that. He just puts up his hand and says, that's enough, because... He had us there, not because I was sick. I can't emphasize that enough. We had the opportunity. We, we, we've talked about the fact that we could have posted signs and started a Bible study at the University of Toledo. You know how many people would have shown up? Zero. But you know what God did? We had a captive audience. Think about it. A captive audience. I mean, I didn't have symptoms with cryptococcus. I could have been lying there not able to breathe or talk. But I didn't have any of those symptoms. They still don't know why. My infectious disease doctor took my case to Walter Reed Hospital an international group of people with the foremost authorities on cryptococcus were gathered. He asked the he took it twice and asked the question, why didn't he have symptoms? There's been no <laughs> legitimate answer other than God decided that I wasn't going to have symptoms. I mean, I got up and walked every day that I was in that hospital. They'd come in and they'd look at the charts. They'd say, you walked? And I said, well, yeah. I mean, I had that thing hooked up to me and I towed it up and down (laughs) in my beautiful hospital gown. (laughs) It wasn't a pretty sight. It was was probably very entertaining (laughs) half time. Other questions? I was in the back taking care of it. (laughs) (laughs) Do you want to know what it looked like? (laughs) Neither do I want to think about it. (laughs) It wasn't a pretty sight. (laughs) Any other questions? Oh, come on. Don't hesitate. Here. 
say it loud, what, repeat it. I'm absolutely convinced that that's the case. I mean, uh, with the Cryptococcus, I can remember the last day, one of the key doctors came in early in the morning without the crew. And he stood beside my bed and he said, David Draper, I want you to understand that I've learned a lot from this case. But more than that, I've learned a lot from you. And so, I think there were converts. Actually, my infectious disease doctor, and I've had good conversations, I think he's renewed his faith. Uh, I mean, I remember one day, I was sitting there in his office, and this is the head of the hospital. And I said to him, doctors, are, God was saying to me, ask him if there's anything you can pray for him about. Now, that's an intimidating thing, isn't it? And I argued with God. Now, I never win those arguments. <laughs> and he, um, I finally said, okay. And I asked him if there's anything that I can pray about. And he hesitated for a long time and finally said, yep. Um, I have a major decision in my life. Would you pray? And we did. And God answered our prayers. I can't say what in the world that was specifically, but God showed up. <clears throat> But we've had experiences like that over and over and over again. Um, and you know something? The key is, is it takes a lot of contact points for someone to finally come to Jesus. Some plant, some water, and then some harvest. I'm absolutely convinced that God's in this and the harvest is his. I mean, we can't save people, right? That's not our responsibility. Our responsibility is to love people, period. Now, that's not easy, is it? <laughs> there are some people that are just not easy to love. <laughs> but that's what we do. We love Speak a name, the name of Jesus where there's that opportunity and then he ultimately gives the increase. One more and then we're going to get into the... Sh I'm glad she knows where she's going because I'm confused. <laughs> Did you have any friends or family that was not on the same page as you guys religiously? Like, you guys openly, religiously, like, had 100% faith in God. And if you did have friends or family like that, how did you respond to them? Friends that didn't know God? Friends or family that, that didn't think that you should put all, like, explicit faith that God was going to get you through this. Well, you got all those kinds of people. I mean, the world is full of doubters because faith you can't see, right? That's what faith's all about. And so you're always going to have people who doubt. I mean, tomorrow I'll talk about the final story, and I know that when I tell that story, some people look at me like, you're crazy which is partly true. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Linda, let's get started on today. We're going to talk about um, cancer. After I had cryptococcus, I had the parathyroid surgery and back surgery. 
This is all going on in a couple of year period. And we uh, went to Europe. I was able to get away. I talked to my infectious disease doctor, and he said, oh, my, go. If you can, just go. Now, he didn't guarantee me that everything was going to be fine. He just said, go. And so we went, and um, Linda's going to get us started on some of the things that happened during that trip, okay? You never know what's going to happen when you're following God. And so we, oh. Can't cover the mic, my dear. I'm just trying to cover my body to keep from freezing. Well, we appreciate that. <laughs> One of these days. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What'd she say? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I can now con con um, <laughs> I can control your kidney. kidney. Yeah, but you can't control me. <laughs> Would you believe that's true? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't gonna happen, is it? <laughs> Let me do this, hon, and then you can you get ready to get started. Empower, that's our third one. It means to give someone the authority or their power to do something. Make them stronger. Make them confident, especially in controlling their life and claiming their rights. Dave, you just messed it all up. <laughs> You're on, Linda. <laughs> Well, I guess it's my turn now. <laughs> Dave had mentioned to you that we went to Europe um, because after all that we had gone through, it just sounded like a good idea to go, to go. And we had another couple who went with us. And it was, it was good to have a, a break in all the health things going down. So... <clears throat> We um, went to Europe from August to September to 2017, and it was wonderful. We enjoyed greatly seeing what was taking place there. On the 14th day, Dave stumbled on a flight of stairs, and it's not always you have to be really careful in a city and you don't know what things are and how they, they go about. But so on day 14, Dave stumbled going up a flight of stairs in Rottenburg, Germany. It hurt his left leg but wasn't debilitating. And he really stumbled up the stairs. On, the, on day 14, 18, we were riding a city cable car in Russell's, Belgium. Another person tried to squeeze past Dave, who was hanging onto a handhold above his head. At that moment, the cable car made a sudden turn to the left, which knocked Dave down into the lap of the poor woman sitting behind him. Little old lady. <laughs> Bet she was surprised. Oh. On day 18, we were riding a cable car near Brussels, Belgium. Another person tried to squeeze past Dave, so he was hanging onto an overhand. Hold on. Once again, it was his left leg that was negatively impacted. And the minute I, I saw all of this happening, why is Dave and nobody else falling? How, how come uh, it's always the left leg? And I really was thinking, this is not good. Something's, 
God is la allowing something to, to operate here. And so I became even more intense on watching. It struck me, as, an, as I was saying, it struck me that he injured his left leg again, his left leg. I believe Albert, Albert Einstein was quick in defining coincidence as God's the way, coincidence is God's way to remain anonymous. So, I thought, well, that's, we've had all that going to take over. And the next morning, when we were coming up the stairs, and guess what happened? Up and bam. And it was really, it was at the very end of our trip to Europe. And boy, am I glad it was, because otherwise, we didn't. The next morning, we were leaving Bel Belgium. And I was praying again for God and whatever had happened to Dave. <clears throat> So the problem on the airplane was is that my leg started to swell, mm -hmm. and not only my leg, but my scrotum was the size of a softball. And it was not good. Um, so we got home and went to, Linda kept pushing me, call a doctor, call a doctor, and I always say, I'm going to be okay, which is stupid. That is true. <laughs> and so I finally called the doctor and went down, and uh, they began to wonder if I uh, might have cancer. So sent me to the hospital here locally to do a number of tests. First of all, to do a circulation test to make sure I didn't have blood clots. And uh, I did not. And finally, um, on Friday of that first week back, I was shaving. And as I was shaving, I felt a knock. And uh, went back to the doctor, and she immediately said, um, uh, that's very suspicious. I'm afraid it's a lymph node. And so they took me to um, do a test for determined it was cancer. And Linda was there looking at the monitor as they put the dye through. And if there's cancer, it lights up red. So guess what? I lit up like a Christmas tree. Uh, nearly every lymph node of my body, and especially down here where there's a, a, there are a lot of lymph nodes here. Um, so they put me in the hospital. Uh, and the interesting thing for me was how difficult it was for the doctors to use the word cancer. I mean, I really, we really felt for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think about it. We all... I don't know about you, but I always thought cancer, I, I wouldn't be able to handle that. It's a horrible word. I never thought about how hard that is for doctors. And it happens with them over and over and over again. And that's another place where I think we need to be more sensitive than Think about others rather than just ourselves. It's interesting when it had been announced that, that it was cancer, and one of the men, one of the doctors, came in and, and got up a stool and sat beside you and was in the point of, cr of crying. People are people, and no matter how 
significant they are, they need to understand that we're all human beings. They put me in a hospital with all this fluid and my infectious disease doctor, that may be who you're talking about, honey, mm -hmm. came in one night. I don't remember this very well. They had me on pain medications because I was in excruciating pain. But he sat down beside the bed and said to me, I'm not here as your doctor. Mm -hmm. I'm here as your friend. And nearly, and, and wept. Mm -hmm. He's sensitive. I hear criticism all the time of doctors who aren't, don't have good said bedside manner or aren't sensitive to my needs. Well, my gracious. Please, may we be sensitive to where they are. And may we exhibit faith in the midst of what in the world's going on. Our faith empowers other people. One of the reasons that we want to tell you these stories of faith that you might be empowered with whatever you're going through. Doesn't have to be that to this extent, but whatever you're going through. Um, one of the other things that we've learned along the way, and Linda taught me this. Most of what he says, <laughs> I already learned him. <laughs> is to call, she talked about it the other night, is to call people by name. Um, because they are people. And she's done that for years. She does it in restaurants. She does it in uh, stores, where, wherever we are. If they don't have a name tag on, we ask the name. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain empathy that she has for other people that draws them to her. I mean, when there's an ambulance that goes down the street out here, I guarantee you Linda's going to be praying for the people in that ambulance. And the ones who might having to come. Yeah. And so we were in Somerset, Pennsylvania at the... Well, let me get the name of this restaurant correctly. It doesn't make sense. It's not Park and Dine. What's the name? Eaton Park. You see, I can never figure out why it's Eaton Park. Don't you park in any... It must have been a man who came up with the title. <laughs> but we were, a little old lady was waiting on us. I would imagine she was 70 years old and still working. You and I were older than that. <laughs> now. <laughs> and all Linda did was to call her by name. At the end of the meal, she came and gave us our bill and just stood there. And I thought, this is kind of odd. And after a while, she said to Linda, would you give me a hug? And that happens in our lives over and over and over again. Because there's that sense and I believe that this is what it was with Jesus. People who needed help were drawn to him. Many times we and religious leaders in are not people that draw people but people that push people away. I still remember Philip Yancey's book, Where's God When It Hurts? He was talking about a lady who was selling her daughter, two-year-old daughter, for kinky sex stuff to feed her habit. And she was struggling with that. And so someone from the church, talked to her and said, well, why don't you get down to the church and get some 
help. And she said, church? Why in the world would I go down to the church? They're not going to make me feel better. They're just make me feel worse about myself. Folks, that is a sad commentary. Something's got to change. We have to help empower one another with the fruit of the Spirit. Which is something that flows out of us. Not something we put on. It's who we are. And Linda lives that. Oh, I've learned it to an extent. I'm still not good at it. I'm a man and I'm a high D. You, you know, know what, what a high it? D is? That's on the disc. It's uh, best way to describe it is lead, follow, or get out of the way. Do you see what I live like at home? <laughs> One of the things that's happened, I say up there, we've talked about genuine curiosity, asking them questions. I'm saying make friends with godly detours. In other words, instead of grumbling about the troubles that are coming in your life, make friends with it and, and say, okay, God, where, where are you in this? Where are you, Lord? And what are you trying to do? And one of the things that happened to me as a result of all this is that I learned that there are some things that I thought were important are not. There are things that I thought was a high priority and they weren't. I learned that and I'm being very transparent with you now. But for many years I hadn't treated Linda the way she deserved to be treated. And I grieve that. I grieve that. And I tell her all the time, I want to use the remaining years to try to make up for that to a certain point. And so things have changed for us. There are things that Linda always did that she can't do now. So it's my privilege. My privilege to do those things. Now, I don't always do it perfectly. Wow. <laughs> sure didn't expect silence there. We don't have enough time. <laughs> But I'm telling you that people are more important than a lot of the garbage that you and I are making important. Stop it. Just stop it. Don't come to the place that you have to grieve and regret. Keep short accounts. My gracious, we fought over stuff that was so stupid. We still do sometimes. 
but it doesn't go on forever and ever. We stop and we say, I'm sorry. This is not worth it. It's not worth it. And when we say we're sorry, we forgive each other, and my statement to her frequently is, let's just move forward. Just stop here and move forward. And what that does is that many times we don't have the empathy to deal with people other places because whatever's going on at home or in our personal relationships is taking too much emotional energy. And it ought not to be. We only have so much of that, right? And I don't want to be spilling it out in my relationship with her. So that we can be more empathetic and loving to the people that we're encountering. And that stuff can empower. It helps empower one another. I can remember I wasted lots of time, even as I was working and worried about the relationship between us and that we had just battled or whatever, and I don't have to waste that emotional energy now. And remember, the tests that you're going through, that's what fills out your testimony. It's easy to praise God when things are going well. We don't even do it very well then, do we? Even though it's easy. But can we with James count it all joy? When we encounter troubles and trials because God is at work. If I hadn't hit these troubles and trials, there would not have been change. Let God give you power You can empower others. Anything you want to add, honey? One question I have. I used to know this, but I'm not sure that I have it correct. Um, do you know what the word compassion means? I'm sorry? Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know many people who know that. <laughs> and I wasn't trying to say, look at me at the teacher. Um, compassion, when you're hurting, it's necessary, or best if someone will come alongside you and hold you or however they th that was a, a good thing to do and um, compassion is to hurt with other people who should be doing that day after day after day talks about the word passion. Did, and did you see the movie, The Passion of Christ? How many of you have seen that movie? I've what, seen parts of it, but I couldn't see it all. It was just what's too it about? bad. Suffering. suffering. 
And the prefix come means with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to have compassion on others is to suffer with. Now, there are certain things that come with that. To suffer with means that you are doing some suffering. And your suffering helps you to be more understanding mm -hmm. of someone else who's suffering. But instead, we often are hit the trials and the troubles and we start asking questions. I have a sermon with three questions when you hit trouble. I hear them all the time. First one is, why? And the second one is, why me? Mm -hmm. And the third one is, why now? And there were times during this whole process And I wanted to say, God, isn't enough enough? Why me? But I've changed that. Why not me? Why not? Can God trust me? with troubles and trials. Can God trust me to join him in his suffering? We'll talk more about that tomorrow. It's time for us to close, but I do want to give you any other thoughts or questions, any questions, I really have felt today about giving you the opportunity to ask questions like we did at the beginning. Any questions, just stand up and speak out loud quickly. Are you going to continue the story of the cancer tomorrow? We'll do, a, we'll do some of that. We'll talk about the treatment because we'll, we'll have more time tomorrow and then there's one other thing that occurred in my life back then that was worse than all this other stuff combined. I don't know what that Which is. just about got me. And I'm not talking about just about got me physically. It just about got me spiritually and emotionally. Yes, it'll all be on our YouTube channel. I'm not sure how long that will be, but at some point in time, they will be up on the YouTube channel. We'll talk more about the treatment process, which was wild. Uh, chemotherapy. If you've not been there, and you know somebody it is, I guarantee you, well, I was going to say they need a hug, but they can't be hugged. I got to the place that I remember about three-fourths of the way through the treatments, they called me in Muncie, and my nurse said, David, do not leave the house. Do not leave the house. You have no immunity at all. It's not there. She said, if you get anywhere close to somebody who's got something, you got it. I couldn't go to church. I couldn't go. I love to eat out. That's obvious, isn't it? You weren't supposed to laugh on that one. <laughs> so we'll talk more. We'll, we'll pick it up. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And one of the reasons they improved because I'm different. Priorities are different. Linda, do you sometimes still have trouble believing that the person who is now 
so different than the person who was the truth of that? Yes. Yes. And there are times when I just want to push him away because he messes up sometimes. There are no perfect people. That's not an excuse, folks. Any others? This is great. Yes. Oh, absolutely. She had, the question was, can we pray for you? And I never turned that down. Only if I'm included. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like the mic to do that? Heavenly Father, we come before your throne, and it is a privilege to share that throne with Linda and Dave. Father, we lift them up to you. We are thankful and grateful at how they have continued to not give up, to continue to reach out to you, to grow closer to you, closer to each other. Thank you that they have exemplified what it means to be a believer and follower of you in the good times, in the bad times, in the healthy times, in the times of sickness, in the times of laughter, and in the times of tears, in the mess that life sometimes throws at us. We praise your name together. We thank you for this time to worship together with them. Continue to walk beside them as we know you are. Continue to pour your power and your might, your wisdom, your strength, your health. We ask you to to bless things like their insurance plans, their finances, their intimacy with each other, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. May these stories not be just stories, but they would be reminders to each of us as we leave from here this weekend to truly ponder the life you have given each one of us and to ponder what is it that you are saying to us this weekend and what do you want us to do about it and who can stand beside us and help hold us accountable mm. to follow through We praise you, we love you, we adore you, and we are so thankful and grateful to hear about how you have continued to work through Dave and Linda in very unexpected and sometimes unwanted ways that are messy and that hurt, but are glorious because it shows your glory. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you, and may I say one more thing? A lot of our prayer support in these last years comes from our son's church, Urban Light Community Church, and six of those ladies are here today, and they're only here today, so thank you ladies for coming. And I would like to say something. These women work in the church, mm. and they're very involved, and that honors God. And one of these young ladies got off jo her job around 1 o'clock. 
and she hasn't been asleep since. Got up at 5.30 to get here this morning. Okay. All right. You guys can be seated. Hasn't it been great so far? Yes. Yeah. I know I have enjoyed it. I've been blessed and looking forward to tomorrow and what they have to share in the morning. Um, we do have a few housekeeping issues. Um, supper will be over in the AMU building. If you don't know where that is, follow the crowd, but it's kind of across from where Henderson, where we had lunch at. Um, we will not be back in this room, so even tomorrow we will be over there. So take all your stuff with you when you leave. Don't leave anything behind. We do need some help moving the centerpieces. So if somebody at your table could grab the centerpiece and the piece of paper and somebody eat all the candy so we don't have to take it with us. Let me, Just let me come down it there. I know. <laughs> um, if somebody oh. could take that over and we'll put them on the tables over there. Um, supper will be served at 5.30 and the doors will open around 5.20, 20, 25 ish. There is like a seating area over there so you can sit down and hang out and chat or whatever. We got about 45 minutes. Um, and then we'll have supper and we'll do our door prizes and then we'll have Joyce Sankey, who the comedian, will be over there this evening. So you guys are dismissed. <laughs>